Yes, uh, Margaret Ferrier becomes the uh, first MP in Scotland to be recalled under this procedure. Around 14% of eligible voters in her constituency backed ousting her. Uh, they did this by uh, either signing a petition in person, some of them could vote by post. You only actually need 10% though for this to happen. Now this is a story that has been running for some time. Uh, Margaret Ferrier was found to have brought uh, the House of Commons reputation into disrepute. She was found to have put lives at risk and that's because Back in 2020, at the height of the pandemic, she spoke in a debate in the House of Commons after testing positive for COVID. When she had a positive test, she travelled by train from London to Scotland. It's something that sparked a lot of anger in her constituency. It sparked anger in the SNP. They were very quick to kick her out of the party. She has been sitting as an independent ever since. Now, uh, she wasn't here today. She could choose to stand as an independent uh, in the upcoming by election. She's not without some support in her constituency. Um, Labour and the SNP, though, they already have their candidates for this upcoming by election. The timing, really important for both parties. For the SNP, a relatively new First Minister trying to show he can maintain support for Labour. This is a big deal. They feel they need to prove ahead of a general election they can win in Scotland again. So Keir Starmer has already visited the seat a number of times. I think we can expect to see much more of that over the summer. Catherine Sampson, thank you. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to Jackie Bailey, the deputy leader of the Scottish Labour Party, and the SNP MP for Glasgow East, David Linden. I asked him what he thought of Labour's claim that they were the party of change in Scotland. The idea that the Labour Party somehow offers change will be met with a degree of incredulity in Rutherglen and Hamilton West, given that we have a Labour Party that is thorough to the disgraceful two-child policy. It appears also to support the bedroom tax. So I think when Jackie Bailey and her colleagues are going round the doors in Rutherglen and Hamilton West, they'll have to explain how they offer change whilst uh, being thorough to Tory policy. Jackie Bailey? Well, I have to tell you, we've been round many, many doors in Rutherglen and Hamilton West, and people are saying that they think Scottish Labour can be the change that this constituency needs and indeed that the country needs. It's an opportunity to boot out the Tories from number 10, but it's also an opportunity to hold this SNP government in Holyrood to account. Labour is the party that will deliver change in this constituency, but also across the country. David Linden, I mean, that key point that this is a Westminster election, it's not about the Scottish Government, and if you want change, you want to get rid of the Conservatives, it makes sense to vote Labour at this by-election. I mean, that's true, isn't it? No, it's not, because the reality is that Sir Keir Starmer and his pro-Brexit Labour Party support the bedroom tax, they support the two-child policy, and they have nothing new to offer in terms of the cost of living crisis, which is crippling households right across Rutherglen and Hamilton West. One of the things that we hear regularly in the doorstep in Rutherglen and Hamilton West is people saying, who is Keir Starmer? What does he stand for? Because at the moment, all we hear is someone who's a pale imitation of the Tories, and the only way to get real change is to vote for a party of independence, and that's exactly the message that the SNP will be well, taking. Well, I mean, if we want to, to talk about imitations, backlighting. then, I mean, you know... We're looking at a SNP government that's been mired in scandal, uh, you know, alleged corruption. That, that's sounding an awful lot more like an imitation of Conservatives in London than the Labour Party, isn't it? I would reject that absolutely, right? I don't think there is any suggestion of corruption in the Scottish Government, and I think that would come as a huge surprise to the Permanent Secretary of the Scottish there, Government. There so have been allegations... Well, I, I'm certainly not aware of any allegations. I mean, what the Scottish Government is doing is getting on with the day job. One of the first things that First Minister Hamza Yusuf did was to triple the fuel insecurity fund because we know that the cost of living crisis is biting very, very hard for people all across Scotland. And this by-election will be an opportunity to put the cost of living crisis and to put independence on the agenda. And that's something that I don't think the Labour Party can necessarily do with any credibility. Jackie Bailey, given this isn't a Westminster election... Um... You know, are you saying Labour needs a Scottish win in order to rule the UK? No, I'm not saying that at all, but, of course, I would say that there is no route to a majority Labour government that doesn't run through Scotland, and, actually, we want to win across the country. But, I mean, if that's the case, then, I mean, if this is about Westminster and Scotland's voice in Westminster, isn't it better to have a big SNP group, which is the third biggest party in... In, 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 in Westminster, gets those questions at Prime Minister's questions and represents the nation, rather than a bunch of 
compliant Scottish Labour MPs who have to subjugate their opposition to Keir Starmer's policies. Well. Let me start by rejecting the characterisation of Scottish Labour Well, MPs. you disagree with the two-child um, Believe me, they will, stand up, they, will, they will stand up for people in Scotland. You disagree but, with Keir Starmer had, on benefits, don't you? Know, you? It, but but let, me, let me finish the point. We, we have had, frankly, you know, a number of uh, SNP MPs down at Westminster, um, and they have not changed anything. Child poverty in Scotland, under their watch, is, remains too high. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Christian. And what parallel universe does Jackie really have to, to merity to lecture us on child no, poverty? I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Rutherglen. Supports I'm a in two child You're limit, not. a two child limit that is tantamount to social engineering. Labour have plans for an ambitious child poverty strategy, um, the likes of which we haven't seen th since we were last in government. We're ambitious to get people back into work so that we're not ending up discussing which benefit is better, but we're actually paying them decent wages in good, secure jobs. You've tried to have an argument here about different aspects of policy. Isn't the bottom line, come whenever this by-election is called, that your party is mired in scandal, the MP was removed for breaking the law, that's going to be what settles this? And Margaret Ferrier was removed from the Scottish National Party two years ago, Krishnan. The SNP is focusing on the day job, making sure that we're supporting people through this cost of living crisis. Yeah. And what they're hearing tonight is a, a Scottish well, Labour Party branch office, frankly. All you're doing is talking about independence. Frankly. Jackie Let's Bailey, if you were a three-child family in Scotland, how should you vote? Should you vote for the party opposed to the cap I or the one vote... in favour of it? You should vote for Scottish Labour and you should vote for Michael Shanks because, to be frank with you, we have ambitious plans to lift all children out of poverty. Okay. We want to make work pay. We want to see people back in employment in thriving communities. We must leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed, David Lind and Jackie Bailey. Thanks for your time.